The GPU in the phone is a full 3D chip. In this release, we're supporting a set of five configurable effects. We're not supporting truly arbitrary programmable shaders in this version. So these five effects are your palette of technique to render with to create different graphical effects. Plus, the Sprite Batch class supports hardware accelerated 3D. So some basic effects rendering a 3D model. Basic effect is familiar from previous game studio versions. We've had this class for a while, but we've done a lot of work to optimize it for the phone. It supports anywhere from zero to three directional lights. It implements the standard blin fong shading model. It optionally supports a texture. It supports fog and it supports vertex coloring. And there are different performance implications to which of these things you turn on. If you look at this table, you'll see that without any lighting enabled, it's really cheap. Five instructions per vertex and one instruction per pixel running on the GPU. If you turn on just one light that's evaluated per vertex, the vertex cost goes up quite a bit, the pixel cost stays very cheap. If you turn on three lights, that adds even more cost. You'll notice I list only one light and three lights. I didn't include a two lights. We don't have a special edge shader path for just two lights. If you turn on pixel lighting, you'll see performance tanks right down to... That's not long, I guess. So if I turn on pixel lighting, performance goes way down. The pixel cost jumps up to 50 instructions. I can show you that in action in this demo. You can see I can zoom in and out of this tank. I can zoom way in. You'll see that's really quite a high polygon very detailed model. If I zoom out a little bit, at the moment I'm using the three vertex lights mode. If I change that to three pixel lights, performance hasn't really changed because it's quite small on the screen, so it's not covering very many pixels. But now if I zoom in, you'll see that the frame rate goes way down because it's covering a lot of pixels, and with pixel lighting enabled, <coughs> that's not really going to run too fast. I can change that again, let's turn lighting off completely, and it's fast again. Three lights. So with basic effects, be careful with pixel lighting. Use it for things that are small on the screen. Don't cover the whole screen with things that use pixel lighting and expect that to run fast. Down the bottom of the table here, I'm showing that turning on a texture doesn't affect performance too much. Turning on fog adds four instructions to the vertex shader. That doesn't mean don't use fog. There's times when you need it and it can be a great thing, but don't turn fog on all the time if you don't need it. Dual texture effect. This guy. This is really a good effect to be using on the phone. The thing about the mobile hardware is it's not an Xbox 360. It's a nice GPU. It's, it's low power compared to what you're probably used to seeing in a PC or a gaming console. And the way to get great looking graphics on a chipset that's less powerful is to pre-compute. If you do stuff offline, you don't have to do it at runtime. So this guy takes two textures with two different sets of texture coordinates and it blends them together using a modulate 2x mode, which means it multiplies them and then doubles. So that means you can over-brighten if one of the textures contains a color brighter than mid-gray. The end result will end up brighter than the first texture was. So this is useful for light maps, it's useful for detailed textures. This demo I have here, so I can rotate around, it's a simple 3D scene, it's blocks. If I turn the light map off, that's the base texture. It's very flat and uninteresting. I'll turn the texture off and turn the light map on. And you can see the light map texture. This was pre-computed, it contains a couple of different areas of color. It contains some shadows and some glowing shapes. And if I multiply them together, I can get the effect of lighting. The great thing about doing lighting this way is that this shader is really cheap. Just seven instructions per vertex and six instructions per pixel. And you can do as fancy a lighting as you want. It's static, obviously, but you can pre-compute this in Maps or Maya or any 3D modeling package. So you can do radiosity lighting. You can make thousands of lights into a scene, and it will still all just render on the phone with great pixel cost. Back out of that effect, and we'll show you the alpha test. Alpha test is for rejecting pixels based on their alpha value. This will test the alpha of the pixel that's coming in and disable the depth and stencil rights if the alpha is less than or greater than or equal to specified value. 
This is really useful for billboarding and new posters, where you can take a complex 3D shape, draw it into a render target, and then draw that render target to the screen as if it was in the 3D world, using alpha test to sort it against the things that are, are around it. Alpha tests on Windows is often considered a performance optimization. People turn it on just to tell the GPU not to bother rendering pixels that have zero alpha. That's not the case on the phone. On this hardware, alpha blending is free. You can use alpha blending all, all the time on everything, and it won't cost you anything at all, just thanks to the nature of this GPU architecture. So alpha test actually costs you a few extra instructions compared to not doing it. What I'm doing in this demo, this is showing a technique called imposters. You see I'm drawing an awful lot of tanks, and I can spin around them with good frame rates. What I'm doing here is I'm only actually drawing one tank into a render target, and then I'm drawing a lot of copies of that render target to the screen. That tank has way too many triangles in for me to draw that many of it in real time on this phone. This is a really interesting technique for a lot of games. If you want to have a big crowd scene where you want thousands of different people, just draw 10 people to render targets and then scatter copies of them all around the world. It's also great for games where the camera doesn't change too much because you can do things like, hey, I've got a really complex building with a bunch of trees and things. But in my RTS game, I'm going to draw that whole building and all its surroundings to a render target. And then as long as the camera stays in the same place, every frame I can just draw that render target to the screen, draw my player characters around it, and not have to re-render the building from scratch. So you can get the illusion of much more complex geometry than you're actually rendering. Skin effect is fairly simple. This has the same lighting model as basic effect, so it supports one to three lights with the same performance characteristics. One light is faster than three lights. Pixel light is probably not great if you want awesome performance. This does vertex skinning on the GPU. It supports up to 72 bones, and it supports either one, two, or four weights per vertex. And you can see from this table that one weight per vertex is the fastest, going up to two weights per vertex to add seven instructions for the vertex shader and going up to four weights per vertex, that's 13 instructions. So it's not a huge difference. If you want great looking characters, four weights are obviously good, but there is a performance benefit to using fewer. Finally, this is the environment map effect. This guy's been making things that look shiny. It has a couple of different modes. What this does, it has an infused texture, and then it samples a cubic environment map over the top of that. You can either render to those environment maps on the fly if you want dynamic reflections, or you can just pre-compute them and have an environment map that here's a typical set of what surrounds my scene in the game world. This can be used for shiny objects. It can also be used for fake specular lighting to simulate very many lights. So what I have here, I'm going to turn all of the, the environment map off. So you can see that's just a static model. I have a cube map that contains this background image wrapped into a cube to surround my object. So if I just turn up the environment map amount, it's just going to turn to a totally chrome, reflecting the surroundings. You can see those rocks in the spray reflecting in my UFO that's come down to hover over the coastline there. If I don't want total, just chromium, everything's absolutely reflected, I can turn up the Fresnel factor. And what this does, it simulates the property of light in real life, where when, when light strikes, strikes a shiny object, it strikes it edge on like this. It doesn't really reflect too much, but if light strikes at a glancing angle, it bounces off and looks very shiny. So if I turn the Fresnel amount up, you can see that when the UFO faces the camera, it doesn't look reflective at all. But as it spins and turns edge on, then it becomes more shiny. All the way up to, I can get a very subtle reflection if I turn Fresnel to maximum. Just turn the end point back off. The other thing I can do is turn up specular. So you see that it doesn't really look reflective now, it just looks like it's lit by a lot of very bright, shiny lights. What that's doing with this control is taking the alpha channel of the QMAP and multiplying that by the specular color that I specified. So if I draw little blobs or bright shapes into the alpha channel of my QMAP, I get what looks like specular light as a result. So with a pretty, pretty cheap shader that uses just a handful of pixel instructions, I'm rendering something that looks like it was lit by, I think in this QMAP I have about 60 specular lights on the same object. 